Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing something quite different. Well, I haven't done it for nine years since Flo was born. I'm going to go beach casting. It'll be interesting to see whether I can still cast with these things. I just hope they don't blow up on my first cast. I never really used to catch much and when I bought the kayak uh, there was no looking back. And I'm going to be targeting sole, fingers crossed, because it's late August. You also get things like red mullet, black bream, all got quite small mouths, even trigger fish. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to tie a, uh, a flapper rig, three hook flapper rig, with small hooks, and then uh, head down there. Right, so the plan is to fish um, black lug with a little section of rag on the end. Cameras and B940s in a size four, that's what I'm going to be using. And I'll be clipping three of those down. So for the rig body, I'm going to use um, greased weasel, a what, 10 pound breaking strain for every ounce of lead. Uh, but I'll be casting four ounce leads, that's, that's fine. That's Somewhere. Still these bags and boxes. I have got some bits that I can make some use out of. I'm going to use these things to clip down the, the snoods, and as you can see a little bit of metal sticking out there, which I'll, I'll um, twist back with a pair of pliers. But I'll get this whole rig set up and then show you in its entirety. That's one done, and obviously I've twisted that up to stop it from being pulled out. That's a size four hook tied onto 20 pound amnesia. I've gone for red. Got the sequin as a stop and as a bait stop, I'm just going to get a little snip of silicon tubing, and it needs to be about three or four millimeters long. Thread it onto the line, loop the line back over, and post it back through again. Like so, and then pull tight, and there's your sliding rubber. I can set it about that far away from the hook, so the worm bait will be up the line like that. Right, so there's the rig in its full entirety. We've got a swivel at the top to go to onto the shock leader. Uh, we've got a swivel trap between two beads, crimped in beads, and a short snood followed by a, um, a stop, a sequin and the hook, and that's stowed on the clip down. And then spaced out about two foot down is our second one, they're all identical. And then our third one. You can see the length of the rig. It's longer than me, it's a seven foot rig. It just means that the baits are nicely spread out once they're cast out. Hence the short snoots really. Um, the more you can spread the baits out, the more chance of you actually getting the bait in the right spot. But you'll see I've bent the wires out and that's just because it's a big tide. Just bending the tips over like this gives you a lot more grip and you can get away with lighter leads. So that's that. We've arrived at Cogden. It's absolutely rammed because it's uh, late August. All car parks are full up. They managed to find somewhere to park and uh, we've got a long walk down to the beach, which isn't such a bad thing because it puts off the uh, Puts off the amateurs, doesn't it? Well, seemingly not. <laughs> That's why we're coming. Since getting the kayak, I haven't really looked back, but um, I'm really glad I came because it's just beautiful. Mackerel. I have to be honest, it's slightly nerve wracking having to recast this after nine years. So, my excuse for chucking out a few mackerel feathers, really, just see if I can get back into the swing of it. I, well, I'm really nervous. I expect it will blow up on my first cast, but we'll see. So the idea of this is twofold. Firstly, to get a grip with this thing. I can't believe I used to fish with the reels on the left hand, just for that extra length of rod to do the work. These are handy, stops your thumbs from getting ripped up. It's a bit of a bike tube just strapped on, put it over the, stop, over the um, Shock leader not stops your thumb from getting ripped up. I'm probably only hitting about 80 to 100 yards, but to be honest, that's a good thing. That's fine, that'll do me. Oh, so I'm using my, basically using my fingers just as opposed to using a line guide. Just use my fingers to put the line back on the reel evenly. Fishing a pop-up seemed to fish a lot better than feathers down here. I don't know why. 
And in recent years, the mackerel have got bigger and bigger and fewer and fewer, largely because of the commercial fishing. It does bring back really good memories coming down here. I've been coming down here since I was a kid. But it is sad to see the mackerel population becoming depleted. Whoever would have thought that would be possible. And then off that swivel, we've got a strip of mackerel just on a long trace with two floating beads popped up behind it. And then a nice long drop down to the next swivel with the same thing. They're just crimped into place, those floating beads. And uh, if you're lucky, you do pick up bass like that as well. Or if you scale down, you pick up garfish too. I want to pop this one out, but it's um, getting to that point of the evening where I'll start thinking about getting some uh, bottom baits out. Stick a baiting needle in just to make it rigid. And literally just add a small square of ragworm on at the bottom to give a bit of scent. There you go. That's one bait done. Whoa! Hell! Oh, this rod went over! I don't know, but if that's a mackerel, they ain't half pulled hard. Yeah. So this must be a mackerel, but it pulled the rod over. <laughs> Mackerel! <laughs> well, there you go. It's a monster mackerel. That is ridiculous. So, in fact, I want it to take the rod over. That's outrageous! I did have a pouting, I didn't bother recording it because a pouting is a pouting. Will's just had a strap conga. Let's go and have a look. A wicked bite. <laughs> so, Mr. Eel. Cuffing pebbles, poor chap. Oh, that's a drop back. So, from wiggly worms on the hook to wiggly congas on the line. <laughs> and that's what he's just coughed up. I imagine I hooked that fish first and the conga's taking it afterwards. They're cool fish. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, let's have a look and get them back in. I've got really mixed feelings about that session. It's uh, brought back loads of nostalgic memories of the days when I used to go beach fishing all the time. It was a stark reminder as to just how tough it can be in terms of the fishing. You don't catch anything like as much as you do on the kayak. It was lovely to catch up with old friends. Thank goodness I caught that big mackerel because that paid for my night's accommodation uh, with my mum. Keeps her happy. I bought loads of bait because I wanted to have a, a secret agenda of going out and fishing the next day um, because the rest of my family are coming down to visit. Um, but I've got to use the bait up, right? <laughs> Uh, so I'm down at uh, Ferry Bridge and I'm going to pop into uh, the local tackle shop and just pick up a bit of squid and hopefully pick up some gurnard and some bream, perhaps a bass if I'm lucky. What a top bloke in that tackle shop. Ouch. That's new. 
It's a shame because on the big tides the uh, water used to deter people from crossing. So after a good walk I found myself a section of beach that I have entirely to myself. It's completely flat because there's an 11 mile per hour northerly wind and it's a 4.1 metre tide and it's a neap. If you've ever wondered what a neap tide is, a neap tide just means that the tides are gradually getting smaller with the moon as opposed to the spring where they get slightly bigger each time. Uh, yeah, so I've got a whole place to myself. I think I might have a... Uh... No, let's just get on the fish. Right, bait. So good, the fish will fight over it. Please take your litter home. Good point. Well, I hope they're right, otherwise I'll be asking for a refund. So I'm going to start off with a slightly exploratory rig. I've got a little bit of squid at the top for any bream that are feeding high up in the water. A ragworm on the middle bait, tipped with a little bit of squid. On the bottom bait, I have got um, a little bit of mackerel flesh because Gurnard can't resist a little bit of mackerel flesh. I picked these up from the tackle shop. £4.50 for a rig. That's expensive, but to be honest with you, um, if it saves me having to to make rigs on the beach and that's money well spent and it's a looks like a good quality rig actually i'm just going to change the hooks over I do believe i have a bite after two and a half hours of fishing on the right hand rod yeah i hit that after two hours of waiting i've got a little bream on the squid on the tip so i'll probably just switch all to to squid Saves a blank. About half past four, five o'clock. Ty's just starting to come back in again. Things have picked up a little bit, getting a few little rattles on the right hand rod. Ow, 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 ow. It's spiky. Double hookup of Gurnard on squid, which is great. Such beautiful markings. Listen to them croaking. Cool. Oh. Kicking myself for not switching to squid earlier. I've used the worms because I bought the worms, so I needed to use them up. But pointless if you're not going to catch anything on them. Cool. Just tiny little bits of squid, three of those, strapped on with elastic. My brother's just phoned me on WhatsApp and he's asked um, what this is all about. Well, the answer to that is that when the sun's out, I can do this, right? And I can act still actually see my rod tips, which is great. So there you are, top tip. Ooh. The bites are really quite subtle, actually, for the Bream and the Gurnard, even that double shot. So I better check that out. It's slightly bigger, minimum size limit's 24 centimetres and I think this would be pushing it, although I'd make a nice lunch. That's why it's so important to use small hooks. He's taking that one in. Even size fours are a bit too big. God, that was Long way, mate. Long way. There he goes. Ciao. Last cast of the day. I actually said last cast. So it was going to be my last cast. On the lure. 
I thought I hit a mackerel. It certainly didn't feel like a bass. Both the other rods packed away and I got hit. Wicked, on a sand eel. That's the best gurner that I've had today. It's been absolutely dead the last, well, for the last couple of hours on the bottom baits. That is so cool. I'm so pleased to catch something on the lure. <laughs> Wicked. Wicked.